Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Friday Night Martinis. Tonight's martini, um, uh, before I make tonight's martini, I'm going to give you a little lesson in martini making. I think most people think it's just, you know, throw things into a glass and uh, into a shaker and shake it and throw it on on ice and, and put it into a glass and then you're done. But there's a little bit more to it than that. There's a couple of ways you can do it. One of the things, first things I really like to do is to have a chilled glass. So we keep most of our martini glasses in the freezer. It just makes for a really nice, um, nice drink when you get it made. So that's the number one thing you do. Now we use shakers most of the time because we like ours shaken. But if you listen to James Bond, shaken, not stirred, a lot of people in the 50s used to make them by stirring them. And stirring them meant in a very classy little martini glass, or, or pardon me, a martini jug, and they'd stir it so as not to bruise the gin, apparently, that's what it means. To me, I don't care, I think it tastes good bruised, but maybe not everybody does. So uh, you, you'll see a lot of antiques that are out there, much like this, because that's how they serve them. The other thing they used to do that I don't like either is add a lot of vermouth to their uh, regular martinis. Now, we have a, a spritzer. It's filled with vermouth. It's, it's perfect. It's got the amount that you need by just giving it a spritz. So if you spray three or four times into the, into the shaker, you probably have enough vermouth. Some people will take it rinse it in the glass and then pour it out uh, but I think this works just as well and it can be a, a perfume atomizer if you want it really doesn't make any difference what you use so I have several of those as well now <clears throat> pardon me tonight's martini is is uh, a little bit not very classic and it's quite strong when I say strong it's all alcohol but that's what a regular gin one is but it has instead of using vermouth it we're going to use scotch so let's give it a try. Now we're going to do it the traditional way, which is pouring all the ingredients right into a pitcher and then adding the ice afterwards. So first off, we add three ounces of gin. So one, oops, spilled a little bit there. Two, three ounces of gin, and it says London Dry, so that's what I've got. And then three quarters of an ounce of scotch. I don't think it really makes any difference. I think the smokier the better probably then, so single malt might be good. So three quarters of an ounce of scotch. And then three dashes of Angostura bitters. One, two, three. I guess that's what adds the real smoky flavor. Then you're going to add your ice onto that, as much as you want at this point. And I'm going to use the little stir thing that I had from the other one. Just stir it up nice. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. Just get it a little bit chilled. and add it to your martini glass using a separator so your ice doesn't get in. There we go. And last but not least, which I left over here, of course, Just garnish with a little lemon peel. Makes it look pretty. I don't think it really does anything. Just makes it look good. Okay, let's give it a try. Actually, that's not bad at all. So I know some people are, if you're a scotch drinker, you'll probably, probably really like it. But if not, it won't matter. It tastes good anyway. So as I said before, it's called a smoky martini. And uh, again, not that traditional, but still really good. So have a wonderful Friday and we will see you next week.